Oh, Marty, okay. Raise your hand. You do. I did. Okay. Oh, okay. 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 So I'm the only one who is not muted. So I'm going to start. Oops. Thank, thank you, everybody, for joining us. Due to COVID-19, we are living in challenging times. My mother, Molly Rothman, who was naturally a very social person, was forced to stay in her apartment for five months to protect her from catching the virus. Zoom helped her connect with family and friends, but not on a daily basis. My mother was worthy of a traditional funeral at her Beth Torah synagogue, attended by hundreds of people. Instead, we were limited to just 20 people at a gravesite service, which was live streamed on the internet. My brother Jeff in Israel was able to watch, although he was an ocean away. Technical difficulties were experienced for part of the transmission but a complete video is now available from the Steeles Memorial website. Thanks to Zoom, all of you can share in honoring a grand lady who was one of a kind. My brother Jeff and his wife Deborah will begin. Thanks, Terry. Uh, I've got here printed out uh, all of the messages of condolence that we had and it's a very thick book and uh and all the emails as well so uh it's been uh, uh wonderful to read all these messages from everybody so thank you very much to everybody who who, who sent them and um i've been reading them all and uh one thing that came out uh, above all else is uh mom's ability to, to speak to everybody that she met and to welcome newcomers like at Beth Torah, uh, how new people coming into the shul for the first time would, uh, would have mom come out and welcome them and uh, just to break the ice. And uh, she always went out of, their, out of her way to uh, find them and welcome them and introduce them to others. Also, she was uh, amazing in visiting people from, I remember her visiting elderly relatives when I was growing up, like, uh, like uh, Mimi Bessie, I remember, and uh, uh, the few other Mimis, which means auntie in Yiddish. And uh, until today, uh, until just now, because she always went around as much as she could, because as long as she could drive, she would go to visit people. And she had that ability to uh, uh, make them feel that they weren't forgotten. And she always made sure that uh, she would visit people on her way home from shul or whenever she could. Uh, Mom instilled in me uh, and all of us a sense of belonging with the Jewish people and with Israel. So it made it inevitable that I would end up today in Israel. And although I was far away, I always felt her sense of pride that, that uh, I moved here along with, with Howie, that we were living here and that it, it made it easier for me to be apart from her and, uh, and, and from the rest of the family in Canada. Uh, but she she came to visit us as much as as much as she could. Uh, firstly, in England when I lived there for for ten years, and then when we finally moved to Israel, and uh, she came here as often as she could. And uh, even though in the last few years, when it was getting harder and harder, she always made sure that she could come here as often as she could, and we loved it when she came to visit. She also, she had a great singing voice, I'm sure a lot of you know, and I just found out from one of the messages that she was an alto, I never knew that. Um, 
and uh, she, but she was always singing around the house and singing to us while she was preparing food or listening to along to a, a song on the radio. And uh, she made people happy by appearing in uh, musical reviews in uh, Pioneer Women Namat, and also, of course, with the uh, Beth Torah Choir that she was a member of for many years. And uh, she used to always love hearing us play and sing on the guitar, those of us who, could, who, who can play, the, the boys in the family. And uh, she always asked me to play her a few songs whenever she came to visit. And I knew that it made her happy and she would always sing along with uh, whatever songs I played. And uh, one thing that came back to me today, uh, a memory out of the blue that for some reason, whenever she would come to visit, she always asked me to play a song for her called Jimmy Crack Corn. And I never knew how to play that song. It was a, a folk song that was around before I was born. And I had heard of it, but I never knew how to play it. But mom always thought it was funny. She would come in and not only would she ask me to play it again and again, but she would always tell the story about how it came into her head one day to ask me to play it. And every time she would come to visit, she would laugh at herself and chuckle about the story that she had once asked me to play that song. So today for the first time ever, I looked up the song Jimmy Crack Corn to see if I could find some meaning there. And I found that it was a song that, that wouldn't, be, wouldn't be politically correct today. It's being about a black slave in the Old South who had to protect his master from, a, from the bloop-tailed fly. And in the end, the master ends up dying after being bitten by the blue-tailed fly and falling off his horse. And in the end of the song, the master is buried and on his gravestone it says, the victim of the blue-tailed fly. The slave sings the song and no one feels sorry for the master, but everyone can be happy about the slave who is finally freed from the burden of protecting his master. Now, I don't know what it means and maybe there is no meaning, but I spent this morning laughing along with my mother, asking me to play Jimmy Crack Corn. Thinking about a fly, thinking about a fly that causes a bad person to fall off his horse. And it made me remember that my mother was someone who believed in justice and in compassion and in making people laugh. So let's all remember her that way, how she loved us, how she loved music, how she made us laugh, and how she made the world a better place just by being in it. Now, uh, Deborah would like to say a few words. The first time I met my mother-in-law, Molly, was in Israel about 37 years ago. And the last time we were together was also in Israel. That time, as during all her other visits, we would make together her famous strudel. So after Jeff and I heard the sad news that mum was no longer with us, I went out, bought the ingredients and started making her strudel. I knew that I wouldn't even come close to baking it like she did. So at the beginning, I was wondering why even try. But I soon realized once I started that it was about the experience I was remembering and picturing her in my kitchen, rolling carefully the pastry, expertly spreading the jam and fillings. She was with me again. Even the story she told me every time we had this bonding session came back to me how her mother-in-law had made it for her. And when she asked for the recipe, she said to mum, her daughter-in-law, a little bit of this, a little bit of that. So she stood next to her mother-in-law with pen and paper and wrote down exactly how she made it. Now I have the recipe in mum's handwriting and I will always treasure it, as well as the time we spent together making strudel. Thanks, Jeff. Okay, thank you. It's, thank you. Um, 
So as, as Jeff mentioned, uh, Steve, Shelley, Jeff and I have been amazed by the condolences pouring in by email, phone and the Steele's Memorial website. Many people mentioned her role as photographer. My mother believed in the importance of documenting events in the Jewish community, as well as uh, gatherings with family and friends. When COVID-19 put an end to all that, she started taking pictures of her computer screen during Zoom meetings until I taught her how to save screenshots. Instead of sharing actual prints and digital files of photos, she shared screenshots by email. Here is a tribute to my mother celebrating a life well lived. Oops, just a sec. Okay, so now we're going to uh, start hearing from various family members and uh, people from organizations that my mother belonged to. There were more than I, uh, I wasn't able to get people from all the organizations, but uh, uh, there are quite a few people who want to speak about my mother. So the first one to speak is Karen Mack, who's going to represent the Rothman cousins. Okay, I hope I'm not frozen. It sounded like I just did freeze. <laughs> um, 
I've been asked to represent the Rothman cousins, but I can only speak of my own experience with my Aunt Molly, and um, there was a great experience. So, uh, as the Rothmans know, my uh, father moved away uh, to Mexico, and although I saw my cousins at many bar mitzvahs, uh, it was Molly's Passover Seder that really kept me connected to the Rothman family. The table stretched across the entire living room and dining room. Everyone was welcome. Uh, I would be amazed when I go in the kitchen at the number of dishes and food. It was everywhere and the cleanup looked uh, astronomical, but uh, nothing fazed Molly. You know, she was just um, welcoming and, and happy that everyone was there and, and always calm, unlike me, when I'm, I could never do that. <laughs> Everything had to be just uh, right for me. And um, she was just never frazzled. And years later, um, you know, I had children and uh, lived not too far away. And she made a point to stop by to see my children, always bringing them something. And of course, Droodle and, and, um, and taking pictures and sending the pictures in the mail and, and uh, making sure that uh, she knew my children. Um, because again, the get togethers were not uh, what they were before and, um, and they certainly know who Aunt Molly was. And um, uh, it was meaningful for Molly to be in the Rothman clan. Uh, I felt that she was the glue and the moral compass and she informed us when uh, a family member was sick and needed help or, or just a kind word, um, uh, when to send best wishes on a birthday or, or, or a new baby. Uh, she, she was a reminder of everything that was going on. And, uh, and she certainly uh, 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 had that role in the family. But what most touched me was in the final years of my mother's life, when she had not seen my mother Peggy for decades, she visited her in the nursing home when many other people didn't, many friends never visited, not a pleasant place to be, but she went several times and uh, always kind hearted and giving of herself and she showed she cared for us all. And um, then just on, on a lighter note, um, uh, many years ago I baked uh, Molly Strudel also being my, uh, my grandmother's strudel who worked in a bakery and um, turned out very well. But uh, as time went on, I thought, gee, this isn't health healthy um, uh, to be using Crisco, which I didn't use anymore. So I did my search on the internet and tried to find a substitute. And, and I spent a lot of time looking and trying to find a substitute for that dough that uses a strudel that's used for the strudel. Looked all over and looked all over and all I could come up with was there on the internet was Shelly and Molly's recipe for strudel. So I now know that there was no substitute for um, the strudel dough, just as there'll be no substitute for uh, Aunt Molly. <laughs> anyway, so that's what I have to say and we will miss her. Thank you, Karen. <laughs> and now, uh, Brina Parnas will talk on behalf of the Parnas cousins. Brina, are you there? Brina, are you? Can you? You can unmute yes. yourself. Okay. Thank you. Um, it is a great honor to say a few words about Auntie Molly, even though everyone will agree it is impossible to do justice to how special a person she was in just a few minutes. I wanted to share just a few of the many things that Auntie Molly taught us, harnesses or harness or parns children, lessons by no me and Natalie have been passing on to their children. The first is the importance of family. Growing up, I don't think we realized just how lucky we were. By the time me and Ali and I came around, we were part of a huge, close-knit, Ernest Rothman Pasternak family with us babies of the family, including Sherry and Shale, running around the Rothman house often up to no good, aged on at times by our cool older cousins, Howie, Jeff, Esther, 
Laura, Ricky, Mitch, Stevie, and Terry and their services. Green up, green up. Can you stop? We can't hear you very well. The audio. Oh, you can. The audio is not uh, very clear. Okay. That's a bit better. Okay. okay. Sorry. Sorry for interrupting. Sorry about it. <laughs> Let me... Sorry about that. I'm sorry. Uh, is this better? A bit better. Okay. Sorry about that. Um, so what I was saying is, Auntie Marley taught us patterns Harvest children lessons that I know near and now we have passed on to their children. And the first is the importance of family. Uh, growing up, I don't think we realized just how very lucky we were. At the time, when Natalie and I uh, came around, we were part of a huge close knit harvest rock and passed from our family. With us babies in the family, including Jerry and Cheryl, running around the Rockman house, often up to no good. Eggs on at times by our cool older cousins, Howie, Jeff, Esther, Rob, Ricky, Mitch, Stevie, and Terry. Auntie Molly always put family first. She made sure that family stayed connected by hosting many large Shabbat dinners in the early years, by hosting regular Shabbat and holiday dinners with her right hand, Terry, and all the other siblings that was his last three nieces in his small apartment. She was a family historian. Coordinating the creation of the family treaty and remembering celebrating, and yes, definitely documenting people, bringing them off, the birthdays and milestones of everyone. I also remember the care she took of Zadie and Gabi, um, and um, especially Zadie after they passed away. Her big heart and the love she showed on her parents, so those children, grandchildren, great grandchildren, nieces, nephews, and cousins is something that we will always cherish. Another thing that I can make about is generosity of spirit. From the numerous strangers she had come into her home for Shabbat dinner because they had nowhere else to go, some of whom were quite interesting characters to say the least. So the time she brought them the family to move into her home for a month when we were in two houses, even though she herself was going through a difficult time of her life, she was always putting the needs of others first. There are so many good stories we could tell about Auntie Molly and her wonderful personality, like the time she asked with genuine curiosity whether I knew any Graham, or the time her famous potato left us mysteriously disappeared at a big kind of a celebration hosted at Madeline's house. There will never be another Auntie Molly. We are heartbroken, we miss her dearly, but she will remain in our hearts and memories forever. Thank you. Thank you, Brina. And now, um, Yafa, one of uh, my mother's uh, granddaughters, is going to speak. Oh, nice. Hi. Yafa, Yafa, Hi, Yafa. yes, I'm Wait. here, I'm here. Can you hear me? Yeah. Okay. So I, um, I first want to thank um, you uh, for organizing this and taking yeah. such good care of uh, Bobby Molly that, and also Uncle Steve, thank you. I really appreciate it because I'm far away and and it means a lot. Yeah. Um, I wanted to speak a bit about the way I I um, experienced my grandmother. Uh, she taught me always to stay young. She when I would ask her how old she is, she would always say she's sweet sixteen. And I never knew her her age. Um, she was a light, like a special light for me. Every time she came to visit in Israel, and came and bought us the dollar presents for me, it was like the best thing in the world. Um, uh, she taught me the value of volunteering. Um, she volunteered all her life, and I tried to go in her footsteps. Um, she even know, knew how to have fun. We, when I would stay at her for Friday night and Shabbat, and Shabbat so she would always, would always have a l'chaim and she would drink with me scotch and that was really nice. Um, 
she was a very strong, powerful feminist woman. Uh, that's how I experienced her. Um, she's a role model for me in, in a lot of ways. And, um, and there's so much to learn from her. Um, she was such a busy lady. Um, when I came to visit, so she said, but yeah, but you know, I have my plans. I have my schedule. So you have to make your own plans or join me. Um, so I learned from her how to be organized um, with um, a diary and schedule and writing down things. Um, the sad, the most sad part today is that I, usually when I have these Zoom meetings, uh, there she is, and there she is with her makeup, and there she is with her camera, taking pictures of everybody. And I really, really miss it now. Um, I really miss her, and she was very special to me. She is very special to me, and I'm so happy I, I experienced um, and had time with her through the last few years when I came to visit her in Canada and she came to visit me in Israel and family. So I'm grateful for that. And I'll always remember her as my Bobby Molly, my sweet 16 Bobby Molly. Thank you for giving me the opportunity to speak. Thank you, Yafa. As I mentioned, uh, my mother was involved in a lot of organizations. So the first person to speak will be uh, Judith, Judith Ross, who uh, is uh, a member of Club Beersheba. Thank you, Terry, for giving me this opportunity. It's been a really difficult week. <clears throat> um, we've all heard the Lady of the Lamp. Well, we always refer to Molly as the the red-headed lady with the camera. And uh, even when there were professional photographers around, she always managed to get her Namat pictures on her own as well. And every time there was a, a luncheon or something, we had her signs and we all gathered around and there were some wonderful ones that, they, that you showed at, with the slideshow. Uh, and one of the, some of them that I remember so clearly. Uh, Molly was one of the founding members of Club of Shiva. Uh, over 65, about 65 years ago now, I guess. And uh, when I joined, I'm a comparatively new member. I didn't join until 1990. Uh, I sensed that this was a, a remarkable woman. And uh, my first two years later, I was, uh, well, I became vice president the next year and president a couple of years later and uh, co-president. And I had wonderful people to work with. They guided me, but Molly was always there. We needed a volunteer for anything. Molly was the first one to put her hand up. Um, she, she was just a great supporter of everything the club did and we love her dearly and we're gonna miss it terribly. Our club is somewhat um, not really in action right now. I try to keep them together once a month on Zoom but we never get more than the five or six members. But I've been getting a lot of phone calls and I've made a lot of phone calls of how, how much we respect and remember an amazing, amazing woman. And of course, she brought a lot of money into Naamat by having all these great grandchildren. So that was wonderful because we would always make donations in the card, which the money would go to Naamat to honor her on these wonderful occasions. And she was so thrilled with each, the birth of each one and all the ones that will come in the future. And again, thank you, Terry, for giving me this opportunity on behalf of all the women of Club Rashiva. Thank you. My mother uh, loved uh, being a part of Club Beersheba. And um, as I wrote to you that um, I chose a casket called Beersheba in honor of your club. And I knew oh. that she would love to be uh, <laughs> uh, resting with uh, Beersheba. Thank you. So the uh, next person is uh, Doris Wexler who is uh, president of Naamat Canada. Hello, um, I met Molly soon after I joined Naamat in 1991. 
the lady with red hair. When I first started my own journey in the organization, she had always been there to lend her ideas, her creativity, and her wisdom onto the various presidents and other executive members in the organization. She led them at Toronto before my time, and ever since, she has always been an inspiration for those who followed. You could always count on Molly to complete the tasks she volunteered for in recent years as well. She started the huge task of working, working on the archives as she felt strongly that the history of NAMA Canada and Toronto in particular should never be forgotten. She felt that the members that founded Namat Canada were owed that respect. And with her gift of photography, she made sure that the organization and all of its events would be featured in the Canadian Jewish News. I also traveled with Molly to Israel a few times, and I must say she kept up with all the younger Hevera and seemed to enjoy being in Israel as she felt so connected. Molly always also shared how proud she was of her own family members all around the world, and always told us of the new births and accomplishments of her growing family. Around the board table, and more recently on Zoom, the members of Namat Toronto will forever miss Molly's vibrant enthusiasm. My daughter came over to my home on the day we heard about Molly's passing, crying, as she grew up knowing Molly, ever since she was a toddler, at bizarre craft shows and other events. <laughs> the great lady with red hair. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Doris. Um, my brother Steve is going to read a message from Gary Tile, who uh, used to be president of the One Family Fund. Steve? Wait, you have to unmute yourself. Are you unmuted? No, can you hear me now? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. okay. All right. Um, our relationship with One Family Fund, unfortunately, uh, resulted from the uh, attack in Harnoff on November the 18th, 2014. At that time, uh, two Palestinian terrorists, they invaded the synagogue in Harnaf while morning prayers were being said, and they, they killed five rabbis, as well as a, uh, a Drew, Druid policeman. And my brother Howie was uh, put into a very serious and critical condition However, you survived that attack for 11 months in a coma. And after that, he, um, he unfortunately succumbed to his injuries. But uh, we came to know One Family Fund very well during that time. They were one of the first people on the scene <clears throat> in order to support our family. And I just received uh, an email from Gary Tile, who was the executive director of One Family Fund at that time. And this is the email that he sent to me. I came to meet Molly six years ago and sadly at a time of great darkness in her life. I was executive of One Family Fund, an organization on the ground in Israel, which looks after the needs of victims of terror and their families. It was following the tragic terror attack in Harnoff, which ultimately claimed the life of your beloved Howie, that I was connected to Molly. After hearing of a visit I made to Levenstein Hospital to see Howie during that terrible period, she reached out to me and I was immediately taken by her warmth and extraordinary resilience in the face of such tragedy. I learned from this and was inspired by her strength and courage and willingness to share her experience with me. Through one family, we also built a very strong connection in Israel with her granddaughter Yaffa, who came to Canada and spoke at events for us along with Stephen. I remember how Molly was so proud to take her to these events and to Beth Torah where she also spoke. 
Molly remained a great supporter of the organization and would often call or send notes with special requests. She always put a smile on my face. It turns out we shared some family connections as well. She knew my parents very well from high school days at Harvard Collegiate and had Zionist connections to my grandmother Leah, who was a founding member of Pioneer Women Club One. We even had cousins at Beth Torah. Once we figured this out, the story started flowing and the emails with pictures started coming. She even asked me to share some pictures of my family with her, which miraculously ended up in the Canadian Jewish news. The last time I saw her was at a family bar mitzvah last year at Beth Torah. I was there with my parents and she was so excited to greet us and make us feel welcome in what was clearly her special place. I was touched by the beautiful words spoken by your family and the rabbi at her funeral. She was such a kind, passionate and special person. May her memory, commitment to family, friends, the community and to Israel be a blessing and a great source of strength and comfort to you and your family. Gary Tile. Thanks, Steve. And now um, my sister-in-law, Risa Rotman, would like to speak. Risa? Hey, I'm going to mute my phone. Um, I don't know if I'm speaking as a daughter-in-law. I mean, um, she was... She was the ultimate daughter-in-law to her own mother-in-law, and she became the ultimate mother-in-law to her, da her daughter-in-laws. But I was actually thinking of a different memory, um, something that I have so much appreciation to her. My father, when he was 73 years old, he moved to Toronto to be near my brother. My mother had passed away three years earlier. And um, he was very lonely, and as much as my brother spent time with him, um, he couldn't be there all the time. And mom, being who she was, she um, would, my father had lost his ability to drive a car anymore. And um, she would pick him up every other week. And they would go out for lunch together for company and for, her, for my father to get out a little bit. <coughs> and, um, <coughs> and it was very good for my father. It was yeah. very special. She would, they, they would have this whole thing, it's your week to pay, it's my week to pay. And it was just a nice friendship um, that they both, that they could both share. And it was a very, very big kindness to my father so that he could have a little bit to get out, a little stimulation. So um, that's my thought. And of course, mom was the ultimate grandmother to her many, many grandchildren. Um, and uh, you know, it's hard for my kids because on one hand she was very much the grandmother, the only grandparent. And she was here, but she wasn't. So um, it was very sad for them. They miss her. Everybody, of course, is missing her and will continue to miss her. Thanks, Risa. Another organization that my mother was involved with was the Neighborhood Interfaith Group. And uh, Jerry Grammer is going to talk about uh, my mother's involvement with that organization. Uh, my name is Jerry Grammer. I'm the past chairman of the Neighborhood Interfaith Group. Uh, many of you don't know what that group is. It, is. it consists of six synagogues, five churches, and two mosques mostly located in Midtown Toronto. It's been in existence for over 30 years, and it, we're there to foster interfaith dialogue, which hopefully will lead to greater understanding and respect for each of the uh, Abrahamic faiths. Years ago, I approached Rabbi Saperman to have Beth, Beth Torah join our group. He agreed and said he would send a member of his congregation to represent Beth Torah. That person was Molly. I first met Molly at one of our executive meetings. My first impression of her was here was this sweet little fiery redheaded lady. And she came across as someone who's totally committed to the interfaith idea and continued uh, 
to come to our executive meetings over the many years that she served, always coming and providing uh, some very interesting ideas, some of which were very ex were excellent in how we could continue to further our goals. She never failed to attend an annual, our annual meeting, our annual event, always bringing her trusty camera to photograph all the many attendees and later emailing them to everyone on the executive. She was an invaluable contributor to the group and the dialogue and she will be sorely missed. Uh, just something as a little extra that I hadn't prepared, but Jeff, when you talked about Jimmy Crack Corn, I'm her generation. Jimmy Crack Corn and I don't care. Jimmy Crack Corn and I don't care. Jimmy Crack Corn and I don't care. My master's gone away. Molly, you didn't go away. You're there in the hearts of everybody you ever met and you will continue to be there for many, many years. Thank you very much. And thank you for giving me this opportunity to talk about this wonderful, wonderful lady. Thank you, Jerry. Um, the next person to speak is uh, Bev Schneffer. Uh, my mother got involved in the Aqua Babes at the uh, Gates of Bayview, the apartment complex where she works, uh, where she lived. And uh, my husband spent about uh, five years trying to get my mom to go to the aqua fit, to the pool. And, uh, and then she just uh, got so involved with it that she ended up um, leading some of the classes. So here's uh, Bev to talk about her uh, involvement with the aqua babes. Thank you, Terry. Molly was an active and enthusiastic member of our Gates of Bayview Aquababes. She dressed beautifully, her red hair was always well coiffed, and her face was meticulously made up. Molly would even be in full makeup for our water exercises. If our volunteer exercise instructor, Badri, was not available, as Terry said just now, Molly would cheerfully and most willingly lead the class. Aqua Babes would meet for exercises four times a week, Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, and Friday. On Tuesday and Thursday, we would have a coffee clutch following our exercises, and Molly would come prepared to share a joke or a funny story she had previously read or heard. Molly was our Aqua Babes photographer. She took pictures at our special birthday celebrations and annual social gatherings. She would come prepared with a decorated card showing the date of the special event and take photos of everyone attending. She would then have the photos printed for all who wished a copy. As Terry also said, during the pandemic, Molly asked Terry to teach her how to take screenshots so she could take photos of the Aqua Babes on their weekly Zoom call. She would email those screenshots to every participant. We will all miss our Molly, her ever-present smile and her cheerful disposition. Thank you for letting me speak, Terry. Thank you, Beth. And now uh, another granddaughter, Michelle in Israel, is going to say a few words. Michelle? Hi. Uh, okay, thank you, uh, Terry, for putting this together and for everybody else who put this together. And thank you to all the people who spoke and shared such beautiful memories of Bobby Molly. Um, so here we go. Um, a little powder and paint make a gal what she ain't. Um, as Jesse, as my sister Jesse and I would stare in wide-eyed fascination as Booby partook in her hour-long morning makeup regime, Booby would tell us this important saying. 
Um, how old are you, Booby? We would ask her. I'm sweet 16, she'd say, until much later on when she would sport her age like a badge of honor. When Booby was a teenager, she applied for her first job as a camp counselor. Uh, she would tell me that uh, she applied for the job along with a good friend of hers, and the friend was actually the one who got the job, and why? She would tell me we had all the same qualities. Everything was exactly the same about us. The only difference was that she knew how to play the piano, and I didn't. So I decided that all of my future children would learn to play a musical instrument. And Booby actually bought me a secondhand piano when I was a little girl, and I took lessons for six years, thanks to Booby Molly. Um, my family and I would travel to Toronto to stay at Booby Molly's apartment uh, two or three times a year, and we would get to see her up close on a daily basis. She would also come to stay with us in Montreal every second Passover. When we were in Toronto, she would take us along to the Baycrest Old Age Home, and we would often visit a man named Ben Sien, who was 93 years old. And I never understood if he was our relative or not, but, uh, you know, according to Bobby, he was our relative. Um, I also want to ask you, did you ever know that Bobby had a list of birth dates of close to 100 family members on her freezer, hanging on her freezer. Um, Booby would mail a birthday card with a wonderful wish and money to her children, grandchildren, sons-in-law, daughters-in-law, grandchildren-in-law, great-grandchildren. I want to show you this. This is a card, the last card I got from Booby for my 35th birthday. She, this is what she sent me. Even though she didn't have, you know, she wasn't the richest person around, she would send a nice amount. Um, I was so busy with my six children and, you know, the COVID restrictions. I didn't have a chance to deposit the money, even though she sent it a few months ago. And I want to read you what it said. It says, uh, Dear Michelle, best wishes for a healthy and happy 35th birthday. I remember when you were born and I was in Montreal when she came to help my mom. Um, this, this is something that she sent. When my youngest son was born, she planted a tree in Israel for him. One sec. This, this, this is Bobby Molly's youngest great-grandchild. Okay. And um, one more thing I wanted to uh, say about Bobby is that in many families, you hear that there's a mother-in-law, you know, with an, a negative connotation, mother-in-law. Well, not here. With Bobby Molly, my father, I could see that he was like a son to her and they respected each other tremendously. And when I got married and came with my husband to Bobby's house for the first time, she would always tell me, Michelle, give your husband a drink, make sure he feels comfortable. Um, another time when Bobby visited me in uh, Israel, Many years ago, I was going through great financial difficulties, and Booby visited us, and she noticed that we were missing a lot of basic supplies. So she gave us a few hundred shekels and a list, you know, in her scribbly handwriting. She wrote exactly what I had to buy, a bath mat, a spatula, et cetera, et cetera. So I saved that note for quite a while afterwards, because I felt, you know, a note of, of love from my dear grandmother. Okay, we're gonna miss Booby and uh, have to attend to the baby now. Okay, thank you, Michelle. Another uh, granddaughter, um, well, the co-host of the Zoom meeting, uh, Sherry, is going to talk next. Sherry is next. <clears throat> Sorry. I'm the emotional sure. one of the bunch. Um, I'm, um, as you all know, I'm the, uh, the oldest of all the grandchildren. My daughter is the oldest of all the great grandchildren and my dad is the oldest of all the children. So we were number one in every generation. And um, 
I'm really going to miss Bobby. Um, this is still kind of shocking to us all. The one thing I will be eternally grateful for is that when she was in the hospital, she was restricted on her visitors. And Terry and my dad were the ones that would go and see her. And my dad and my mom were scheduled to go see her last Friday night. And my mom called me and said, I want you to take my place because I know how much Bobby means to you and it, you need to take my place. And my mom went the next day. I went with my dad and we had the opportunity to see her. She of course wasn't uh, conscious. She was with tubes and everything. But at one point the respiratory therapist came in to do some stuff on her and it bothered her to the point where she somewhat became unconscious a little bit. And she started to feel, flare her arms and looked in the direction of the voice of the therapist to her right. And I went to her left and I grabbed her arms and I grabbed her hand and said, you know, Bobby, it's Sherry. I'm right here with you, you're gonna be just fine. And I could see through the slight opening of her eyes that she moved her direction to the left, to my voice. The one thing I'll be eternally grateful to my parents and to Terry for letting me have that moment with her, that I was able to have her knowingly know, see that I was there, that I was there to help her. I told her how much I loved her. I told her she was gonna be just fine, that she needed to come to my home to make Mundelbroit with my daughter and I, my daughter Zoe, when I told her her great grandmother passed away. She obviously was very upset. She was very close to her great Bobby Bali. But she said to me, mommy, I'm gonna really miss Bobby's gefilte fish. And I'm gonna really miss her matzo balls because she always made me gluten-free matzo balls every time I saw her. Bobby will always be remembered for her camera. <laughs> Whenever anybody would say, did anybody take pictures? If Bobby Molly was there, pictures were taken. And we would always say that, don't worry, if my grandmother was there, you know there were pictures taken. She loved taking pictures. She loved having photos of her family. I even had bought her a new, a new photo album that I thought was gonna be perfect for her that unfortunately I will never be able to give to her. Um, but we will carry on her tradition, our family. We will still make her strudel, which I will adoringly love to eat. My daughter would always remind me that it wasn't gluten-free, but I didn't care because I told her it was the best pain I've ever had. I got so much stomach pain eating it, but it was so good, I, I couldn't resist it. Um, one thing that we also shared is our bat mitzvah date. We both had the same bat mitzvah date. And I know that was always very special to the people that we had that. Um, last but not least is my husband, Brian. We've been married now a couple years and she adored my husband. <laughs> um, she saw what a man she was just from the first moment she met him four years ago. Um, the funny part is the second we got married, the first thing she's almost the first thing she said to me is, so what are you going to have another baby? <laughs> and we were both like, no, 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 we're good. We're done. <laughs> You know, we, he has a son, I have my daughter. I said, don't worry, Bubby. The other grandchildren will procreate enough for me to make up for my lack of procreation. And she just started to laugh and she's like, you know what, you're probably right. So thank you cousins for all the children that you've been having and for my brother. Um, but yeah, I, I, sorry, I'm, I'm still kind of in shock that she's gone, but I'm thankful for everyone here um, everyone that came to the service on Friday, everyone that came to the synagogue, um, Bobby, I know is looking on that very proud that that special service was done for her and that will always mean the world to her. Do you want to say something? Okay. Thanks, Sherry. Um, next will be my uncle Alan, the brother-in-law to Molly. Are you unmuted? Oh, oops. Sherry will get you into place.
Alan, you have to unmute yourself. Okay, there you are. There you are. Okay. Oh, you have to unmute. Click on unmute. Yeah. Okay. That's good. Yeah. All right. So, Anna, well, first of all, would like to say something, and then I will uh, uh, join in. Mm -hmm. Sorry, we can't hear you very well. You have to be closer to the mic. Oh, okay. Sorry. Um, Molly lived in many different worlds and played different roles in so many people's lives. She was like a pebble, a very large pebble dropped into the stream of life. A pebble that created a series of very large concentric circles that radiated outward. There was home and hearth where she raised her family, but her love and giving nature were all embracing. Through pioneer women now, not the ripples reached across Toronto, Canada, and across the ocean to Israel's shores. Molly left her mark in people's hearts everywhere. She will be sorely missed by all whose lives she touched. Okay, um, I would like to say a couple of words as well. Um, Molly came into our lives at uh, a very young age. And the earliest memories I have of them are of uh, seeing them on Robert Street in the uh, front parlor. And that's where they had their bedroom and also where, where Stephen was born. Molly has left a legacy, a wonderful legacy. And uh, so many people have talked about this. And she's also left a tangible legacy. This is through her children, grandchildren, and hopefully great grandchildren. And the legacy is strudel. And it's also apple pie as well. And I remember my brothers would always fight to make sure they got the corner, but there were only four corners. Usually I got a corner because I was the youngest. But every time someone makes strudel, they will remember Molly. And they will remember that it was a legacy from my mother to Molly, to Molly's children and nieces, and hopefully the following generation. Molly, we all love you. Thank you. Thank you, Alan. And now my uh, Uncle Ruby, Molly's uh, brother, is going to speak. Can you hear me, Charlie? Yes, very loudly. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> okay, go ahead. Well, as you may be aware, I was unable to attend my sister's funeral. I was having surgery. I know my sister would have wanted me to go ahead. <laughs> Even though I was unable to attend. I'd like to say a few words, personal words, of my sister. As a boy, I used to go to my sister Molly and ask her about my insecurities. As I, I, every young boy, was I ugly with girls like me? Of course, the obvious is positive. You're handsome, the girls were love. When I reached puberty, it was my sister Molly who explained to me the interactions between male and female in a very positive manner. As I grew older, and Molly was married with children, she would take every opportunity or occasion to invite family over to get together for a meal. My siblings and I, my wife, cannot count the number of times 
We were Molly's first Shabbat meal. It was this sense of family that she instilled in me and my wife. And as Molly got older and was alone, we made a special effort to have as many family gatherings as we could. My daughter, Natalie, has continued this tradition. Again, as we got older, we celebrated Molly's birthday, and I was honored to speak on these occasions about her wonderful virtues. The last one being her 85th birthday at Shale's house. Probably during the last 15 years, my siblings and I and our surviving spouses we get together for a meal at the Steel's Deli. It was run by a Chinese guy, but they had wonderful Jewish food. And perhaps every month or two, we would get together. And as we ate our meal, always someone would come up to us and say hello to Molly, and she would greet them. She seemed to know everybody, and they only had kind things to say about her. We are thankful that on the weekend before she went into hospital, we were able to have a final sibling get together at Esther's house. She seemed a little subdued, but otherwise was okay. I wanted to make her usual pictures of us as siblings. I'm sure they're still in her camera, but she would have given them to us the next time we were to meet. Molly was a giver, not a taker. She knew only to volunteer and give her utmost in whatever endeavor she undertook. She would be greatly missed by myself, my wife, my daughter, and may she rest in peace forever. Thank you, Ruby. Um, my cousin, uh, Barbara, would like to speak now. Thank you, Terry. Um, I too have the strudel recipe um, in Aunt Molly's handwriting. She um, sent it to me, I think, right after I got married. And um, I haven't made it in a long time, and I think I'm going to make it for the high holidays coming up. I'm going to pull it out and have a look at it. Um, you know, um, our families were very close. Um, you had five kids and we were five kids and we were all around the same age, Steve and my brother Marty and, and Shelly and Larry and Terry and I are close in age, Howie and Chuck and Jeff and my youngest brother, um, Stuart. Um, and we spent, I, I would say almost all our holidays growing up together, together. Um, we went to the same shul, Beth Torah, um, and Aunt Molly was a huge part of our lives, always with a smile on her face. Um, as, as Cousin Karen said, the, the food was incredible. <laughs> there was always a lot of it, and um, we, um, we are certainly going to miss her. Um, she always, I could always count on her for updates. She still, you know, up till I think when Hannah had her most recent baby, I got an email from her um, with a muscle tub that she'd had a new great grandchild. And, um, and I just think that she's gonna leave a big, big, big legacy, a big legacy and, um, and a big hole in our lives. Thank you, Barbara. And now, um... My sister Shelley and uh, Raymond, her husband Raymond, are going to speak. Raymond or Shelley? Did you unmute yes, yourself? Yes. Am oh. I unmuted? Yeah, yeah, you're there. Okay. I just wanted to thank everybody for these beautiful and heartfelt tributes to my mother. And right now, Raymond and I, we're sitting in my mother's apartment at the dining room table where she hosted so many Shabbat suppers for so many relatives. And if it, 
I don't know if you can see, um, this is the memorial candle, the seven day candle that represents the soul of the departed. And I, I think, so to me, it means that my mother, she's here with us. And I think she's getting a lot of nachis from all these tributes. Okay. Yeah, Raymond, you too. Even though I only once. We can't hear you very well. Even though I married only once. That's better. That's better. I always tell people she, my mother in law was the best mother in law I ever had. <laughs> okay. That's it. Okay, thank you. Would anybody else uh, like to speak? We have about uh, five, 10 minutes left. There's anybody else? Anybody? Hi, can I say something? Oh yeah, go ahead. Hi. Chava. I just wanna, yeah, I just wanted to have the opportunity to say that I really love Bobby Molly and, and I really miss her. She, she was the best Bobby. She was my only Bobby, and never my my other Bobby. But um, she was the best. That's all. Thank you. Thank you, Papa. Would anybody would anybody else like to speak? I wanted. To oh, Sunny Goldstein. Oh, Laura. Laura, go ahead, and uh, then I'll have. Can you hear me. Laura, you're on. Right now. That's hard to hear you. Can you hear me now or not? Yes, very good, very good. Um, I just wanted to say that um, I have a lot of fond memories of Auntie Molly. Um, my parents used to drop me off at your house as a young girl, you know, and every time they went away on a vacation, I was brought to Auntie Molly's house and I spent a lot of time there with all of you, all my cousins and um, some of my best memories were spent there. Of course, you know, I was running around with Jeff all over the house and we were probably up to no good raiding the freezer for ice cream and all of that. But I do remember having, you know, the loveliest Friday night dinners there with Auntie Molly and she would make the most delicious roast chicken. And I just remember everything was absolutely delicious that she ever cooked. And I have, you know, of course, her memories of her of baking the strudel and moon cookies and all of that. I, I absolutely love being there with you guys. Um, and also, as mentioned before, I what sticks out in my mind are the huge Passover seders. Um, there were so many people there. And I remember I looked so forward to it. It was so much fun to be there with all the cousins and, you know, nothing was too, too great of a deal for her. It looked like she just it was also effortless. And when I think about it now and how many people she would have, it's actually incredible that she could put this together. Um, and also, I just want to say that, you know, she was truly um, our mother Bernice's best friend. She was there for her and she went to visit my mother every single weekend without fail. She was always around and she would, you know, take her places. She would for years schlep her walker and put it into her car. I don't even know how she did that, but just nothing was too much for her. She was always there for her. And I know that my mother misses her and truly appreciated the relationship so much. And, I, and she's just completely heartbroken. So I just wanted to say that on behalf of my mother and, um, and, uh, and I'll really miss Auntie Molly forever. I loved her. Thank you. Thanks, Laura. Um, another niece, uh, Lisa, is going to speak next. Um, thank you, Terry. Uh, first of all, I just wanted to thank um, Terry and Sherry um, for organizing this beautiful tribute. Um, Terry, thank you for that wonderful um, PowerPoint presentation that brought your mom to life um, so vividly for everybody. Um, like so many of the cousins who have mentioned what I like to call the legendary Rothman Satyrs in what I often feel is um, 
almost the golden age of the Rothman family era. Um, I'm probably the uh, youngest of the first cousins who remembers attending the Satyrs. And I too um, marvel at Auntie Molly's ability to always recognize the importance of our family being together. And I can vividly see the photos on the walls of her house. And they were always uh, this gateway to my family's history. I remember vividly the Shmura Matzah. That was um, always my first encounter with that. And as my dad mentioned, um, the apple cake, I can see it in the pan uh, with the corners. I too uh, have the recipe. I'm going to have to go back, um, I think, and make it. Um, I also, a lot of the vivid memories that I have are from the chalet. And um, those were also really incredible times for the family to be together, both in summer and in winter. And um, the last thing I wanted to say was uh, in my work at the JCC, very often, I don't even know how it would come up in conversation, somehow somebody would mention Molly or mention Beth Torah or mention Namat. And when I would say that Auntie Molly was my aunt, the expression on their faces, they would just light up and have this gleam of happiness and joy and respect in their eyes talking about her and what an impact she had had on their lives. So we'll miss you, Auntie Molly. Thank you, Lisa. Um, another niece, Aviva, would like to speak next. I um, just want to, yeah, say sorry to your family, Steve and Vicky and Jeff and Deborah and Risa and Terry and Neil. And who am I missing? Howie, Risa. I missed somebody tonight. There's five of you. Um, it was really sad hearing this news about Molly. I had no idea that she was ill. And so that came as quite as a shock. Um, I remember Molly used to send us books for our children for Hanukkah and for Passover. And she always made sure, the candles. and the candles, and she always made sure that there was a Jewish presence in our house. Um, which was so special, and I really appreciated that. I remember her giving us um, Hanukkah gilt, little chocolates, and that was so special. And yes, Molly was the photographer, and I always appreciated that. She always was taking pictures and sending those to us and reminding us that family is important. Um, so I'm going to miss that. And reminding us of people's birthdays and special occasions. That was really, really special. Um, so yeah, Molly was a very, very special person. We're gonna miss her too. Thank you, Aviva. Um, Sunny Goldstein would like to talk next. Yeah, I just wanted to thank you for putting this together and um, also the, I, I met Molly professionally originally, but we very quickly became friends and she drew me into her world we shared a sense of philanthropy and uh, next thing you knew, I was sponsoring uh, events and, and whatever, she, whatever she asked, I, I, there's no way to say no to Molly. So, uh, and we went through her good times and difficult times together. And she helped me through my difficult times when I was going through a low period in my life as well. So I just wanted to say that we'll all miss her and, uh, Thank you again for putting this together. It's a great tribute. Thank you. Thank you, Sunny. Uh, Seema would like to speak. Uh, that's uh, my nephew Shale's mother-in-law. I want to say about Molly, she was uh, beautiful inside and out. She cared about the family and the others. She all the time keep all of us together. And we love her very much. And 
I, I know uh, Sam, um, Samuel in Israel, my nephew Samuel would like to speak. Do you have your mic on, Samuel? There he is. I don't, we can't hear you. No, we still can't hear you. Technical difficulties. <laughs> can't hear you. You're unmuted, but we just can't hear you. Can you hear me now? Yes. Yes. No. That was very weird. I'm using it all the time for work, but uh, it didn't work now. Um, <laughs> um, I also uh, wanted just to say that uh, Ruby is going to be greatly missed. Um, she was an incredibly special person who I only have the most amazing memories with. Um, and uh, it was always uh, so nice looking forward to her visits, um, whether it was in England or Israel. And uh, she always uh, make such an effort to, um, to take pictures of us all and, um, and to, to, to have a laugh and to play and to spend a really amazing quality time with her. Um, and it's so special that, uh, that she could uh, take part in our wedding um, through Zoom um, just before this happened. And um, um, seeing her on Zoom on the, the wedding was uh, so special and to hear her wishes and to, uh, and to know that she was there with us. Um, and, uh, yeah, so uh, I think that's it. Thank you, uh, Samuel. Okay, so uh, I'm going to, uh, we're going to be ending the meeting soon. I just want to say a few things, if I can open up my, okay, here it is. Um, before we end the meeting, I'd like to thank my husband, Neil, for his support, drinking whiskey with my mother on Friday nights, and helping select the music for the slideshow. Thank you to my niece, Sherry, for setting up this special meeting and being the co-host. The meeting has been recorded, so the people who weren't able to join it will be, I'll be uploading the um, video to YouTube in a couple of weeks. And thank you all for being a part of my mother's life. Thank you very much. And thank you to you, Terry, for all that you have done. Thank you, Sharon. You're welcome. Thank you. Thank you. It's such a you. beautiful trip. Thank you for all coming. Thank you, Sherry.